Hi, this is Tracy Konicki with, with CFMQ 98.1, and I'm here with David Berg, who's from Chelan, and he's here to talk about this uh, beautiful book that he has. It's a, a book of his paintings and short stories. So welcome, David. Well, thanks. Yeah, glad you can make it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about... Um, Kind of your experience, because I understand you, you. We were just talking before about uh, you two just kind of came back to Saskatchewan, and this is kind of your your net new career doing yeah. art and and writing. So maybe tell us a little bit about your background and and uh, and then how this book came about. Yeah, so I was raised at Chelan. I was born in '47, so quite a while ago, and ra- raised around Chelan. Then went away to work and took a university, got my diploma in agriculture. Then I worked for the Department of Crop Science for the, my whole career at the University of Saskatoon. Wow. And so, and I started painting when I was 28. So oh, okay. I don't, never painted till then. So and it, I found it very rewarding. Yeah, and I see lots of different um, inspirations too in terms yeah, of your... a lot of landscape work on objects or canvas. Yeah, and we were mentioning while you're here in town, definitely go see our art display. Um, uh, I think you'll appreciate mm. um, Jackie Coleman's art as well as a as a fellow um, artist. I paint, certainly paint, will. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy that. And maybe <laughs> be inspired to do more. So tell us about um, um, now. The title is a training for a happy hunting ground. So how did that title come about? Well, it was a phrase that my father used. And I'm not sure where he got it. Probably from the early days of Hollywood, perhaps he watched movies. And I guess Hollywood somehow introduced this Aboriginal idea of a happy hunting ground. Mm -hmm. And they used it in some of their movies. So Dad used that term sometimes when we were kids, you know. Like, don't do that or you'll end up in the happy hunting ground before you know it. (laughs) (laughs) Things like that. Yes, it stuck with you. And then hunting is very important because... My father was a trapper and a farmer, but mostly a trapper, and we hunted. I was trained as a hunter and a trapper. So uh, so hunting has always been a great part of my life, especially my bow hunting in the last 35 years. Mm. And I have hunted only with the, with a primitive weapon, a longbow or a recurve. Oh, wow. And that's a big part of my life is bow hunting and feeding yeah. myself that way. Yeah. Wow. I know it takes some talent. I tried it and I couldn't do it. <laughs> I have to need more practice. Practice and patience. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Which is, yeah, two things that I usually don't have. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, most of your hunting is with a bow. So, tell us a little bit about, um, um, I like this, uh, you classify yourself as a pseudo naive um, artist. Tell, tell me a little <laughs> bit about that. <laughs> I didn't know you knew that. Yeah. <laughs> But I like yeah. that. I like that. Well, it's sort of a play on words because it's, uh, you know, you're not supposed to classify yourself as an artist, according to the pundits. So it's a real faux pas if somebody says, I'm this style or that style. They decide what you are, you know. Right. So I, but I said, well, for us naive ones, you have to forgive us. Right. So, so I classify myself as a pseudo naive artist. Okay. So well, I just paint whatever. Yeah, there you go. And, and, uh, and just inspired by lots of different things. Mostly the outdoors, yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what's in your book. Yeah, so my book is, uh, has 66 uh, of my paintings in it, 66 images wow. of my paintings. And then I wrote various articles either about or matching the theme of the painting. There might be a story about hunting if, it, if it's a painting of an elk or... You know, it might be just a description of what I was thinking of as I painted or why I painted it, you know, or what inspired me. That's awesome. Yeah, so there, there's a vari- variation of stories in here. So I understand you have uh, some moose stories. I know we're moose yeah. capital of the world. Right. So I thought maybe you could tell us one of your moose yeah. stories. Well, I could read a part of my book that's that about awesome. it. That would be awesome. I marked love it. that. I marked it just now. Okay, good. When, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Yes, so I'll read... The start of painting on objects, moose horn. Okay. Oh, and I, sometimes I've written some tongue twisters. Oh, well, which, oh, that would be good. Which uh, I didn't know about until I started reading it out loud. 
Oh, that they yeah. were tongue twisters. Right. <laughs> yeah. So excuse now, me if I stumble. Yeah, no worries. Now, if you want to put your book up here, oh, okay. there, just, just so you're closer to the mic. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so um, Dave's going to read from his book and uh, um, one of his first mediums on a moose horn. Okay. And we'll just start that over. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I'm reading a, a, an article in my book called Painting on Objects, Moose Horn. As in the case uh, with most members of the deer family, the male moose grows a new set of antlers each year and then sheds them during the winter months to grow a new set starting the following spring. While moose are considered to be common where I live, the populations are never high enough to make it easy for a human to find these cast-off horns. Couple that with large expanses of trackless forest that moose normally prefer, finding a moose hunter could be considered to be uncommon. Another factor that comes into play is the fact that rodents draw upon this natural resource of minerals and readily consume these treasures if found in a freshly shed state. Porcupines especially love moose antlers and can irreparably damage an antler in short order. Therefore, finding a large moose horn in good shape in relatively, is relatively rare even in Chelan country. Every once in a while, though, one can have the good fortune to find a match set. It's all in the luck of the hunter. Ah, that's great. Okay. No, that's awesome. And so we've got all kinds of uh, short yeah. stories. I don't know. What are your uh, tongue twisters? I don't know if you... Oh, I found one little one in there. Sure. But... <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I could find them again, but yeah. I've, I've run across them when I've been okay. reading aloud. So. I've oh, been right. pr- well, trying we'll to practice. Well, we'll buy the book and then find them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so is there any other um, story that you want to uh, highlight yeah, so, so what's your favorite? Oh, well, if you have one, if that's a I, I have a favorite, but I'll, okay. I'll read this to start with. It's in the article called In Training for a Happy Hunting Ground. As a kid, I was raised to be a hunter. That's the way it was when your dad made a living on the trap line. Although he farmed as well, as well, the trap line kept the farm going, my dad's description. Living on a small farm tucked into the bush north of Chelan put me in a perfect place to be a hunter and gatherer. With wild game animals, birds, wild berries, and fish in the river, all within walking distance of our little house, it was a hunter's paradise every day. The white-tailed deer and moose in the nearby forest were my dad's favorite prey, and as I grew up, they were naturally mine too. We milked cows at our farm, but rarely ate beef because the animals were too valuable at market for us to consume. We all preferred the wild game anyway because it was so delicious and more or less free except for the energy needed to hunt and gather it. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for reading those. That's so great. I definitely have to get this book. I'll have to <laughs> be ordering it. Um, so is there uh, anything else that you can you want to mention or say well, about, about your book oh or yes. about your experience? So I could read what's on the back of the book, which the publisher insisted sure. I do. So it's on the back of the book, and this is why I write. All right. I have several reasons for writing. First of all, writing is fun for me. I get a lot of pleasure and very little grief from writing. It is the same with my painting. Here I have a chance to highlight some of my paintings with a short description of my thoughts as I painted, an essay about the situation, or a story that matches the mood. To my knowledge, my Norwegian ancestors didn't paint or write. If they did, unfortunately, none of it was preserved. I've often wished for insight into their lives, yet there is none. So that's why I've painted, composed, and recorded this little collection. This is being created for my descendants and any other interested parties. Here I leave some indication of what my grandparents, parents, and myself were like, what our vistas look like, what we experienced, how we treated one another, what drove us, how we lived, what we hunted, and what we ate. With some luck, this book has a chance to advance into the future. This is why I'm excited about the opportunity to send these memories on their way. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I really appreciate you coming in. And uh, um, I think people, again, in our community can definitely relate to yeah. your experiences, you know, Very with good. hunting. And and uh, um, I really appreciate you coming in. And I, like I said, I'm definitely going to get my hands on this mm-hmm. book because I love all the, the um, I guess... Uh, the relatable stories, that's what it is. The relatable stories growing up in this area. And, uh, 
Yeah, and just appreciate you coming in and sharing those you with bet. us. Yeah, with the paint. So you've got a lot of visuals to go with the stories. So yeah, 66. Yeah, yeah, 66. Plus images of some of, over the years from some of my family, some images of some of them. Great. Yeah, so looking forward to reading that. So I just want to thank, this is uh, David Berg. If you're just tuning in, it's David Berg from Chelan. And uh, he's just had published paintings and uh, short stories. And it's a book called In Training for a Happy Hunting Ground. And David Berg, B-E-R-G-H. And these books are available through Chapters and Amazon. Not so be C-A. Oh, at dot .ca, right. Make sure you chapters, mention that. Right, dot .ca, mm -hmm. not com. So chapters.ca or amazon.ca, and uh, you can get a copy of his book. And if I could add something there, uh, I found after dealing with both companies, chapters.ca is definitely much easier and better to deal with. Okay, Although that's good they to charge $1.50 more a book, but oh. they're much more prompt. Yeah. For whatever reason, they have a different system, and you'll get the book a lot quicker if you order it there. Okay, well, that's but good to if know. if you're used to using Amazon, then use Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good to know. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Dave, and uh, happy writing and happy uh, uh, painting. Yeah, thank you. And, I'll, uh, I'll continue painting till the last of my days. There I you hope. go. That's the best. That's the best way to go out, doing what you love. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Dave.